Welcome back to Ride and Glide. Today we're going to be looking at IP ratings, which is effectively how water and dust resistant your scooter, EUC or bike actually is. The actual term IP stands for ingress protection, and that's from either a solid or a liquid. So what you would normally see are IP, the letters, followed by two numbers. So say it's IP55. The first number, well let's say 54 just to make the numbers different. The first number would be for the dust or the solid ingress protection. The second number is for the liquid. So if it was 54, the five would relate to the dust or the solid, and the four would relate to the liquid. And there is a scale from zero all the way up to nine that you can follow to see which level of protection that each one of those numbers gives. So we're gonna look at both numbers, the solids and the liquids, but most importantly to us as riders, you know, of scooter, e-scooters, EUCs, one wheels, bikes, we're more interested in the water protection rather than the dust, because that uh, can be a real problem when you're riding, it can damage your, your vehicle, and basically destroy it. And we'd like to know if it's covered under warranty or not, uh, if that does actually happen. So, IP ratings are a rating given by a governing body. So if something has an IP rating, it has been tested. You get a general IP rating for a vehicle, or you can get a component IP rating for the individual components on a vehicle. So, we'd look at something like a Visset 10 Plus that has an IP rating of IP44. Now, if we look at the guide, four isn't that high on the rating scale. So when we look at the dust, I've got a guide down here. So protected against a solid object greater than one mil. It's actually quite big. So that's not massively protected from dust, but that doesn't matter because as we said, we're more interested in the water protection. Now, IP44, we're looking at the second number now. So it's a four as well protected against water splashed from all directions with a limited ingress permitted. So what that means is probably okay to ride that in damp ground where a bit of water splashing up onto the scooter. It hasn't given us a component rating, so we don't know the individual IP ratings of each component, but we do know that it has an overall 44 rating. So that would be the minimum rating. So yes, some splashing is gonna be okay. Now, heavy rain and things like that, IP44 isn't going to be capable of covering. So if you have the Visette 10 Plus, the IP rating would suggest that actually you probably don't wanna be going out in the rain. Now a lot of manufacturers won't cover your warranty if it's an IP44 rating because it's very hard to prove that you didn't wash it with a hose pipe or a jet wash or whatever and it was just from splashing and it managed to get in and get damaged. So you'd really be looking for a higher IP rating than that. Take something like the Inmotion V11 EUC. That is an IP55 rated EUC. Now, we go back to the scale, we've looked at 44, this is 55. So the dust rating on that is limited ingress of dust permitted, will not interfere with operation of the equipment for two to eight hours, fantastic. So we know we're covered for dust ingress. Then we look at the, fifth because it was 55, the second number on the liquid, that says protected against jets of water, limited ingress permitted. Now jets aren't gonna be high power jets, but that is going to be pressurized water of some kind, like rain falling down. So IP55, or even slightly bigger puddles splashing up. So IP55 is a lot better than an IP54 rating. Again, your warranty, if you're claiming it has an official rating of IP55, still may be slightly difficult to claim. They may say you know, it's been submerged in water or something like that, which IP55 isn't covered for, but it has a much better rating for your peace of mind if you were riding a product. So 55, forgetting the first number for a minute, like I said, for the dust, but that five in the second column, it's probably the minimum you wanna be looking at if you're riding regularly in damp conditions. In the UK, it seems like it rains all the time. So it's probably a good idea to get as high an IP rating as you possibly can. Now, we look at a product like the Nami Bernie. So that is a product that not only has an overall rating of IP55, so that's its lowest IP rating, or lowest dust and water protection rating, the individual components also show their rating. So for example, the controllers, which are quite exposed down below, they're protected, but they're exposed to the elements, they're actually 
an IP56 rating. So we know what the first number is for five, the dust, but the six for the water, so we'll read that. Water from heavy seas or water projected in powerful jets shall not enter the enclosure in harmful qualities, quantities, sorry. So what that means is if you're traveling along and you're getting a lot of water thrown at those two controllers, which basically control the whole scooter, they are going to be okay. Unless you submerge it completely in water, it sounds like they're gonna cover you. It's gonna be okay, and IP56 is a, is a very good rating for that. The display on the top, where you, you know, where you control the scooter and you see all of your miles per hour and all that kind of stuff, that is also an IP56. So that is gonna get hit hard by rain. If you're out in the rain, that and the controllers are gonna get very wet. They need to have that type of rating. Scooters in the past, we've seen with the boosted rev, had an IPX7 rating for all its drive chain components. They don't make it anymore, but that's an unbelievable rating. That means it can be submersed up to, I think, a meter or a meter and a half for 30 seconds in water, submerged, sorry. And, um, you know, so that would be, that would cover absolutely everything. Now, you can go all the way up on the water rating. So you can go up to IPX9 for a water rating. So the nine in the, the dust only goes up to six, the water rating goes up to nine. Nine would be, Protect against the effects of immersion for long periods of time underwater at a depth set by the manufacturer. What's interesting about IP ratings is you could have a nine in that column, so you're protected at depths, quite deep depths underwater, but it's not protected in, say, the six column from powerful jets. So, it's in, so sometimes they give you two ratings. You can have an IPX6 and an IPX4, uh, and an IPX9 rating. So you can have two ratings for the same thing. One doesn't cover the other. Regarding scooters, skateboards, one wheels, EUCs, really you're looking for those high pressure jets because that is the type of water that you're going to be going through. You're not going to be submerging your, hopefully, going into lakes or ponds with your scooter or EUC or one wheel, whatever it is. You're going to be going out and sometimes you're going to get caught in the rain when it's wet, going through puddles. That type of water is what you're looking to keep out. Bringing it back to the NAMI, as we've gone through the components of the NAMI, we've showed the IP56 of the display, we've got the IP56. 56 of the controllers. The actual entire cabling itself on the NAMI Bernie is IP55 rated, so every cable joint is 55 rated. Therefore, they give the total rating an IP55, although some components are 56 with that higher rating, so they bring it down to the lowest rating. So that is a scooter you would be happy going out in wet conditions in. Whereas, if you find a scooter that has an IP44, you would be much more careful about how wet you are getting that scooter or that EUC or that bike or that one or whichever product that you're riding. So that leads us on to products that don't have IP ratings. If you look at something like the Zoos bike, for example, electric BMX, amazing product, they don't have an IP rating, but they're sold loads and loads and loads in Hawaii, one of the wettest places on earth. It's constantly raining in Hawaii. So they sold a few hundred over there initially, and the feedback they got was some of the screens were misting up, some of the displays. So they then changed them to IP rated displays. So now the displays are IP55 rated. They've had no problems whatsoever. So anecdotally, those bikes in very wet conditions perform really well. Now they change the display. No problem with the batteries, the controllers, the motors, but they don't have an official rating. So when you're buying something like that, talk to the people that are selling it, make sure you trust where you're buying it from, they can give you advice and give you detail on, on um, you know, other people that have used them in similar situations. Please don't buy from people that go, oh yeah, that's totally waterproof, but with no evidence, no ratings whatsoever. That is where you end up in big problems and you can end up with proper warranty issues where you may be liable to pay the entire cost of something, even if you get the tiniest bit of water in it. In conclusion, IP ratings are really important especially the second number, as we've said, for the people like us that ride these electric vehicles to protect us from water ingress. Anything, five minimum would be great, but six or seven, even better. That six is really good because it's got the pressurized jets in it. So anything with a six in the water rating, which is the second number, as we said, is really good. If a product doesn't have a waterproof rating or an IP rating, it doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it can't handle wet conditions. It just means it hasn't gone through the test. But do your research. Make Speak to people who've had it. Go on the forums. You know, Speak to the companies that sell them. See if you can find out more information because you don't want to get stuck paying a bill 
for the entire product or not being able to use something. They're expensive products just because you've got a little bit of water damage in it. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe uh, if you like what we do. If you want the information about any of the products or anything else about waterproofing or anything else at all related to the products we sell, go to www.rideandglide.co.uk. Give us a call, give us a live chat, send us an email. We are always available to chat and we are as helpful as we can possibly be. So please don't worry about it. Just contact us about anything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.